I like to bid a shalom to the bride of the Messiah, a shalom to the 144,000, and a shalom shalom to the nation of Israel. For you are the bride of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom. So what you see here before you, my brothers and sisters, are pictures of an eagle. We're going to come back to these pictures because I want you to notice something about the eagle. Remember, Torah, in the book, which we call Torah, the five books, when you study Torah, Torah was teaching us the mysteries. But because we was in the flesh, Israel, do you hear me, Israelites? Because we were in the flesh, as written in Psalms chapter 68, we could not grasp the mysteries or the messages that Torah was teaching us. Okay? The messages of heaven, the mysteries of heaven. So I want you to take the time to pause your screen and look at this eagle. Because it could bring us to this. We need to ask ourselves this. Why would Yahuwah use an eagle? Why would Yahuwah use an eagle in Revelations chapter 12? So the title of this word today is The Mystery of the Eagle Wings. The Mystery of the Eagle Wings. Please check the video description box or the pinned comment section for the um, announcements. For well, Yahuwah are revealing a lot of things in these last days. He is also revealing unto us the season or the time that we are in. Please take a look at Yahuwah's timeline and, and Enoch's ten week prophecy. Okay. Check the letter I in the right hand corner of this video. If you do not see it, let's go to the channel. It is a video that was put up recently and you should find it. Also, in your spare time, you want to read the Apocalypse of Elijah because it will touch base on the mystery of the eagle wings. Okay, it will confirm what we're about to go over. Also, Yahuwah has spoken himself in these last days through his prophets and prophetess concerning unto us what season we are in. And he's also given instructions to the 12 tribes of Israel and to the Gentiles. Please make sure you listen to your prophetic messages. His messages too will be located in the letter I. These messages can be printed out. I recommend that you print out these messages so you can read along what you hear in the video. Okay? Which brings us to this. I need to pull up the calendar. So bear with me, y'all. Let me see if I find a link for the calendar for today. So we need to get date. Okay. On the Heathen's Day. Now the Heathen's Day is May the 9th. Okay. May 9th. And their name of their weekday is Saturday. Okay. This is Satan's calendar. And their year is 2020 AD. If we look at the most high calendar, look at this to take some time. If I just take a time to scroll down, remember his calendar was in the three lights. Whoever is teaching you his calendar, make sure they are following Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. For the three lights are the sun, the moon, and Maserat. And Maserat is a Hebrew word that means the 12 signs. In the Gentile tongue, they call it the zodiac. To confirm what I'm going to you, those who have a copy of 1611, can find it in the side note in the book of Job. 
Also, Enoch talks about the um, Maserat. Um, first, second Enoch. I mean, sorry, you can find it in the first or the second book of Enoch. And then also Josephus talks about this as well. So again, Father always gives us two or three witnesses to confirm what is written. So we ask for the Most High Count. We need to know what year we are in. Yes, the Most High dates are different from the heathen state. For those who are keeping a record from the time of creation up to now, we have learned that we are in the seventh day from Adam. This is very important to know. For it relates what is written in the Apocrypha. You need to read Second Ezra, chapter seven. Okay, it's also in First Enoch, First and Second Adam and Eve, and the book of Matthew, chapter twenty-four. How these, how knowing this day, how it relates to the biblical prophecies and what the Messiah was talking about that we should know the season. So we are in the seventh day from Adam. And the seventh day from Adam falls in the year of 7,000 to 7,999. For as from creation, we are in the twelfth day from creation. And that falls in the year of 12,000 to 1299. Okay. Now at this time, this is what we have. Okay. According to what Beta Israel have, because they haven't entered into uh, Tishri or the seventh month for the new year or the civil year okay because remember before there was changes that they started the year in the seventh month okay when you do a further study about the seventh month you will learn that the seventh month is the beginning and the end the aleph and tall the afra and omega and it relates to the father and the son even the heavens manifest this to give you an understanding about the Father and the Son and why they are the first and the last and why they are the beginning and the end. But let us continue. So for right now, Beta Israel have the year of 7,091 from Adam. Myself, I have 7,087 for Adam. And Brother Hashur has 7,518 from Adam. Now for the Jewish people who the Bible called the synagogue of Satan, they are converts. They have been taught under the ways of the Pharisees, Sadducees, okay, and Herodians. This is where they get their doctrines. Now, not all Jewish people are the same, okay, but I'm just talking about the majority of what they follow. There are some Jewish who are converts in the uh, Hebrew term, we call them Yethad, Y-A-H-A-D, okay, that do not follow that doctrine. However, I'm talking about with the majority. They follow the Tammud. The Tamu has nothing to do with Torah, nor with the word of Yah. Okay, that is something of Satan. All right, and how they came into that doctrine, our people taught it. The Pharisees, yes, and they were doing it with making proselytes and stuff. Our people taught them, and that's how it is still carried on this day. However, they have the year of five thousand seven hundred and eighty, and the reason why their time is way off. Remember, they don't believe in the Messiah, so their time calculation will be totally different from what myself, Beta Israel, and Brother Hashua has. But what I'm showing unto you, I'm confirming that we are in the seventh day. Again, you have to read Second Exodus chapter seven to understand why it's important to know what is the year we are in based on Yahuwah day. Now we are in the second month, most high calendar, okay. And the second month is called Zif, and it means brightness. And this is the month when the Sabbath was given to the children of Israel. Read the book of Jubilees, for it will give you the history why we don't see the Sabbath mentioned. When we read Genesis chapter 2, you'll hear no more talk about the Sabbath until we get to Exodus chapter 16. So read the book of Jubilees to give you the history of that. So, to find the Most High Day, you know, Most High Calendar overlap into the heathen's calendar, days and weeks, okay? So based on his calendar, well, we are on, but today on heathen's day, they have what? May night. So this is the day that we're in. We are in the third week of the moon, okay? We are in day one of the week, the first day of the week, all right? And this first day of the week is 
the 16th day, okay, of the moon. And on the heathen's day, that day would fall on May the 8th at sundown to May 9th at sundown. From sundown to sundown. As far as the day of the sun, it falls in the sun's second month and 20th day. And you can take this time down to pause your screen, but there are some biblical events that take place on this day, and it pertains to Exodus chapter 16. I'm not going to go into depth because this video is not about the calendar today. There is a video on the channel that, that gives you the second new moon report, and it has those details. So I'll take this time down to pause your screen. So remember, we are in the third week of the moon circuit. It's the 16th day of the moon which is the first day in the most high week, okay? We are in the sun's second month and 20th day. And the most high day falls on May the 8th at sundown to May night at sundown. Take this time now to pause the screen, now that we have the most high day, okay? So I'm going to close this out now. Back to the title. So before we start, I need to show this. Let me get this out of the way. We need to go back to that picture of the eagle wings. Okay. Take a good look at the eagle. Have you ever wondered why we see the eagle mentioned in the book of Revelation chapter 12? Okay. I want you to take a good look at these pictures here. I'm going to take my time and scroll down. And pay close attention to his And even when you look down to his legs, see how his legs are covered. And I want to see, can I find a real good, good picture to blow up for you? Let me see. Well, you can really see what I'm talking about. See how this eagle is covered in feathers. Okay. Let me just do it this way. See how he's covered in his feathers, he down to his legs. See how his legs are covered. I want you to pay close attention to that because Torah has a commandment that connects to the eagle wings. Okay, Torah does. All right. So let's see where I can take you first. Thank you, Father. Before I go to Revelation chapter 12. This is for you, my brothers and sisters. Okay. A lot of us learn different ways. Okay. And I want you and I, I want to share this um learning technique with you. Because this is how I learned too. And this is how the spirit taught me. When we read the word the most high Yah, he gives instructions on how to learn his word. And one of the instructions is, he says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now the key word that you see highlighted is meditate. Besides praying and fasting, we should meditate on his word day and night. And I'm telling y'all, I'm a witness of this because this work, because this is another mystery I'm going to reveal in this video that is in Torah. Okay? And I know people are not preaching this unto you. They're not telling you about this. It's a lot of great things that Torah was teaching us, Israelites. Do you hear me, Israelites? Let's go for you to Gentiles. Because we are under the same. Okay, there's a lot of things Torah was teaching us, but we couldn't grasp what Torah was, was teaching. Therefore, the Messiah, who is the second Adam, the son of God, be, became our teacher, our master, Adone, our Lord. OK, and we became under him now in the new covenant. See, a lot of people don't understand what that means. We're no longer under the old covenant, which means that we know that the law is not our teacher. The law is not our instructor. 
the law is no longer over us because if it is, there's no room for grace and mercy. You have to follow what the law tell you. So if you transgress against the most high Yah, guess what happens? You have to receive the punishment. However, in the new covenant, we're under the Messiah and through him, he brings grace and mercy. So when we transgress, we can be forgiven, okay, and get up and sin no more. Mm. That reminds me, I have a confession. Look at my life. Look at what the Father has done for me. And he taught me that when you fall, you get up, you belong to me. You don't belong to Satan. Get up and sin no more. Become my daughter. Same thing for you, Israelites and Gentiles. When you sin, repent, make it right with y'all. Get up and sin no more. Become the son and daughter of Yah. However, this is one of the ways that he taught me on how to get into his word. But now we are under the comforter who is the Messiah. As written in 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. And the book of John chapter 14 to chapter 16. Chapter 14, chapter 15, and chapter 16. And through under him, he will teach you all things. So we, for we are now taught by the spirit. And not by the man who is flesh. It is his spirit that teaches us. And you too can get connected to them. To be under that same teacher. Okay. Or same teachings. All right. So one of the things we can do. What we need to meditate on his word. Day and night. Because we begin to meditate. The father will begin to unlock your understanding. And since we are in this time of technology. This is what I love about what the Father has done. Even though men are inventors of evil things, however, there are some good things out here. And one of the good things, let me see, can I go to it? I have to open this chap up so you can see what I'm talking about. When you go to the King James Bible Online.com, you will find this tool you can use because a lot of us don't like to read. Okay? However, Y'all made something good for us to help us with that. Because what I learned from him, if you hear it, see it, and touch it, you can learn better. Okay? Let me see, can I find you? I need to go to the whole chapter so you can see. Right up. You go to the chapter. You scroll down here. Let me see, can I find it? I can find it quicker on my cell phone. But if you go, let me see, can I find it? It's not so easy to find. Here it goes. It's in a different spot. Sorry about that, y'all. When you go to the chapter, and it's under the King James Standard Version, okay? And they do have a popular in the Standard Version, too. But I do know with the Old Testament and the New Testament, you have this at your fingertips. You can have this chapter read out loud to you. Isn't that good? And that helps you with your attendance. Well, not attendance, with your attention. That helps you to pay attention. So oh, for me, when I hear it, when I see it, and by me, me touching the pages, it opened up your understanding so much better. This is how the Father wants you to learn. And through his spirit, it will guide and teach you what his word means. Okay, this is something that for you to look at. So take this time now to pause your screen. So this is what's available to you, and it's free. It's on the King James Bible Online.org. And it's this read out loud version is only available that I've seen so far in the King James Standard Version. Okay, they also have the Apocrypha. They have it in both ways. It is listed in King James 1611 version, but also they have it separately. Okay? There's something for you to know. Also, YouTube has videos on these books being read out loud to you. So guess what? If you're not a reader, those high have these things for you to use. So we have no excuse now. All right. Now let's go to Revelation 12 to get the mystery of the evil wings. Now, we we know 
based on the teaching of others that's on YouTube. Okay. They have pointed out that the eagle falls in the species of a vulture. Okay, and we'll take a look at the strong concordance. And when I began to meditate, I asked the father questions. I asked them. I said, Father, why do we use an eagle or make reference to parts of the eagle, such as his wings, when it comes to the nation of Israel? Okay, why would he do that? Something to meditate on. First, I want to read this verse because you need to ask yourself, why is your life in Gentile? Would he do that? Because you got to know him. Everything he does, he has a reason for it. And he reveals those mysteries or those messages unto his children. Now, we will have understanding these things, but the wicked will not. Okay. So let us go to. Verse 14. However, before we begin, I do want to mention this to you. When you read Revelation 12, I want you to take your time and meditate to every verse you read. Because if you see what I see, it's two things that is mentioned that you need to get with the Father and ask, okay, I see this twice. What are you telling me, Father? It's dealing with the gathering. Now, we know there are going to be different gatherings at different times, according to the biblical prophecies. But you need to take your time and read this chapter. And I'm going to point it out to you. I want you to take your time and notice what events that take place before that verse and after that verse. And you need to get with the Father in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach and meditate and say, Father, why it mentioned two times. And I'm talking about verse 6 right here. And I'm talking about verse 14. However, the subject in this video is about the eagle wings. All right. So let us read. Revelations chapter 14. Matter of fact, did I go to the 6? Yeah, I, go, I did go to the 1611. But I just love you in the um, summary. Because the Bible that we have today, when it was making other translation from the King James Standard, from the King James 611 version, they left out a lot of stuff out. And this is why I recommend that y'all go to the site, which is free, and look at what was written for us to have. For those who have an older copy, such as Big Brother Judith, I believe, if I said his name correctly, he has an older copy of the 1611. And in his copy, it would show what was taken out. Yes, the heathens have been taking out a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. But guess what? The comforter, the spirit of truth, shall still lead you to all truth. The truth still can be, can be revealed in this book. But those heathens who have touched the most high word, they will pay for what they did. Let us continue. Revelation. Revelation chapter 12, the summary. A woman clothed with the sun of the great red dragon standeth before her, ready to devour her child. When she was delivered, she fleeth into the wilderness. Michael and his angels fight with the dragon and prevail. The dragon being cast down into the earth, persecuted the woman. So even with this, this um, even reading this summary, it's going to confirm unto you what I was telling you about verse 6 and verse 14. You need to pay close attention. For it relates to what we discussed. Let me see. Can I pull it up? About the rapture doctrine. Okay. Again, I'm going to tell them to you. There are different gatherings at different times. And you have to come in the whole Bible book to see it. Because we do know, according to the prophet Isaiah, there will be a time that the Gentiles will bring the Israelites to their holy land. Okay, let us keep going. Verse 14.
For it says here, And to the woman were given two wings of an eagle, that she might fly, may, sorry, that she might flee into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. What we're going to focus in this verse, we know the woman is Israel. When we deal with the nation of Israel in their congregation, go back to the old, in the congregation of Israel, which is known as the bride, the church, the assembly. Do you hear me, Israelites and Gentiles? In the congregation of Israel, you have Israelites and Gentiles. Read Exodus chapter 12 and Deuteronomy 12, chapter 29 and see who entered into the covenant with Israel. Remember, there's nothing new in the sun as King Solomon prophesies. What's done in the old is done in the new. Okay? So we know as it's written in Ephesians chapter 2, those who take a hold to the covenant becomes a part of Israel family. They are included in the kingdom of Israel. Okay? King, you got coming a whole volume of book. So we're going to focus on why in this verse do we see the woman, which is Israel, given two wings of a great eagle. Because when we look this word up, let us go here. Because it's, it's, it's several words depending on how eagle is used in the Hebrew. I found two of them. I don't know if there's any more. We know, according to the strong accordance, when we look at this word for eagle, I will play how it's pronounced. Strong's H7360, Racham, Racham. And okay. second entry, Rachama, Rachama. Sorry about that. So when we look at this word, we know that, that an eagle is a vulture. That's the species that bird is classed under. Because we know the eagle is a hunter. And one of the things we know that the eagle do not feast upon their flesh, all right? They only feast upon flesh that they catch, all right, and that they kill. They don't feast upon dead flesh, all right? That's something very important to know. So when we look at the eagle and we, and we see what, what species they fall under, they fall under what the vulture species, which you can see here in this one. H7355. Okay. A strong definition is a kind of vulture supposed to be tender towards its young. Mm, it's already giving us a little hint why the father would use the eagle. Because we can see many verses of him comparing himself as a bird. Okay. Let us go to the next one. Let us go to this Hebrew word. Now, we're going to read this scripture, Deuteronomy 32, verse 11. And let me pull that up right now in this chapter before we look at the strong word on eagle. I'm telling y'all, he's speaking volumes. He is speaking volumes. But we miss it every time. So I'm going to that pull up. We go back to H5404. We're going to look at Deuteronomy 32, 11. And we're going to see what eagle mean in this verse. Strong's age fifty four oh four Nesher Nesher. Okay. <clears throat> so 
According to the strong concordance, the definition of this word that pertains to eagle, it means from an unused root meaning to lacerate the eagle or other large bird of prey, eagle. So we know that the eagle is a bird of prey. We know that the eagle do not feast upon their flesh. It would not eat it. Okay, I'm going to the most high, the most high made um, creature here, okay? And we're going to look at one more thing before we go to Deuteronomy 32. This is looking at the Greek text, okay? And this is where we found in the book of Revelation that we just read. It was in the book of Matthew, the book of Luke, and Revelations chapter 4, okay? So, the meaning of this word. Strong's G105, Aitas, Aitas. Okay. And what it says here, according to the strong definition, from the same as an eagle, from its wind, light, flight. From its wind, light, fright. Eagle. Okay. And we know this is the symbol or the standard that the Romans use. They what? Admire the eagle. They adorn the eagle. When you read the work of Josephus, you will learn that that's the signet they came with when they um, destroyed Marushalom, which is Jerusalem. Okay. All right. So let's go to Deuteronomy 32, verse 7, because we want to read that. Again, I like to read a chapter summary to you before we read it. Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. For it says this Deuteronomy chapter 32, Moses' song, which setteth forth God's mercy and vengeance. He exhorteth them to set their hearts upon it. Yahuwah sent him up to Mount Nebo to see the land and die. Now we're going to go down to verse 11. And what I'm going to read a little higher up. Again, what is done in the past shall happen again in the future. Do you hear me, Israelites and Gentiles? What is done in the past shall happen again in the future. This is why I stress to you, we need to understand the what was. And the what is, and the what is yet to come. For they all relate to one another. Okay? And it's a mystery between the old covenant and the new covenant. And what is yet to come. Mm -hmm. But let us keep going. Verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the waste hollow wilderness. And he's talking about Jacob. Let me read up higher so you can see who he's talking about. Verse 9, for Yahuwah's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So when you study the other books, you get the history of Adam and his lineage and how Yahuwah came to have Jacob as his people. And those books we reveal, and we'll make it short. When you study the history of Adam lineage, all of them were taught about Yahuwah. And how to serve him. But they chose otherwise. And based on what Yahuwah saw in their hearts. He did not choose them to be his inheritance. Instead he placed them under the principalities. Yeah. Go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 17. It's a precept to Romans 13. In the Apocrypha it would confirm. That how he placed the other nations of the earth. Under the, under the principalities, the angels, to lead them astray from him because they would not worship and serve him. This, and that's why I'm stressing to you, Israelites and Gentiles, Yahuwah is a righteous God. He is fair. So don't think he does things, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not in righteousness. He does. But the problem is we don't know him. And we don't know the true history because these heathens keep covering things up. They be lying. 
All right. But now you begin to understand how Jacob became his inheritance and what Jacob was supposed to represent in earth. The nation of Israel was to lead mankind back to you. But because we too was in the flesh, we fell. Therefore, the second Adam, which was already written from the beginning, before the foundation of the world, that's why he had to come. Okay? Not only to save Israel, but to save Adam. Okay? Remember those who were in Sheol. For he too set the captives free from Sheol. And they are waiting for the day. For the regeneration. But however, let's keep going. Verse 10. He found him in the desert land. And in the waste hollowing wilderness. He lead him about. He instruct him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Verse 11. This is the one you want to highlight. As an eagle started up her nest. Fluttered with over her young. Spread it abroad her wings. Take it them. Bear them on her wings. So Yahuwah alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Now we begin to understand why the father used the eagle. He's showing you how the eagle, as the eagle is a mother over her young, how she spread her wings to protect them. When you know what to spread her wing, what, what happens when an eagle spreads his wings? Give you shit against the sun. Mm. And we read, when we read these biblical prophecy, there gonna be a time where the Father is gonna what? He gonna be a shade unto them against the sun. Mm. Do you see? It's so much in tour. He wants to show you and teach you Israelites and Judah, but we have to unharden our hearts. So the same with the eagle, spread her wings above. And taketh them and bear them on her wings. The same shall happen to Israel. Now we're beginning to understand what is written in Matthew chapter 24, Israelites and Gentiles. We got to understand about these wings. Okay? Because just as the eagle taketh her young on her wings, taketh her young on her wings, so shall the shame happen to Israel. As written in Matthew 24. We're going to go there, but let us keep going. It's another thing, another ministry that pertains to the eagle wings that the Father wants you to see. Let me get there. On the channel, it shows you how it relates to Torah with an instruction that Yahuwah gave unto the Israelites, a commandment. And this commandment that I'm talking about is dealing with fringes. This video will give you the breakdown of the fringes to show you what those fringes represent. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this video. I want you to see a picture. Okay. In other words, I want you to see a picture because our brothers and sisters who are of the Northern Kingdom, who are in the North Country, known as America, the Babylon of today, the whore that sits upon the beast. Well, yes, the northern kingdom, the house of Israel are, are here. And when you look at their garments, do you see how their garments are covered in fringes? Do you see this one right here? What do you what did it remind you of? Let me show you what it reminds you of when I look at this. It reminds me of this eagle that we see. Do you see how the eagle has spread his wings? <laughs> do you see? How the eagle has spread out his wings. He can do what? Fly. Okay. Which brings us to this verse. Got to take you to it. Now so you see how the eagle looks when he spread out his wings. Mm. He begins to fly. Which brings us to songs. I'm telling you, it's in the old. It's in the old. And as I'm taking you this to you, I think it was in the year of 2017, a young man came forth because he had a prophecy from the father. And I know many didn't believe because a certain event didn't happen. But to make a long story short, the channel has an article to show you what happened on that day. However, I'm more focused on what the word that he gave. 
the scripture that he gave. Because when he gave this scripture, it's going to tie into the eagle wings. You guys say, huh? Sister, yeah. yeah. We go to the book of Psalms. I tell you now, David was given a lot of prophecies. A lot of prophecies. Mm. Read the book of Samuel. Read the book of Psalms. And you will see the prophecies, those same prophecies written in the book of Genesis. I'm telling y'all to understand the what it is and the what is to come. You got to go back to the what was. Mm -hmm. You sure do. Go to the book of Psalms, verse 9. I mean, chapter 9, verse 4. And you, you know, you got to go to the chapter summary first. I read the chapter summary unto you before we go to that. Yes. Okay? Moshe set forth Jehovah's providence, complaineth of humane fragility, divine chastisement, purity of life. He prayed for the knowledge and sensible experience of Yahuwah's good province. Verse 4. This is the verse I want you to look at. Did I got the right one? Make sure I got the right one, y'all. You know me. I get stuff all twisted. Let me go to it in my book so I can make sure I'm at the right place. Yeah, it's 90, but it's verse 10. Sorry about that, y'all. It's not verse 4, but it's verse 10. For it says in verse 10, The days of our years are, are three score years and ten. So that means 70, y'all. The days of our years are 70. And if by reason of strength, it be four score years, that's 80, y'all. We read that again. And if and if by reason of strength they be eighty years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. Now, if you see what I see, you be we ready to holler. Do you see this? It said the labor and sorrow. Will be cut off. That means put to an end. And because we know the word cut off means what? To be put to death, to be put to an end, to be no more. And then it say what? We're going to fly away. Now, what does it mean that we're going to fly away? Now, Revelation 12 give us what it means. It tells us that Israel, the woman, shall be what? Bear on eagle wings. Mm-hmm. Three bear on eagle wings. They're going to fly. And when we look at the picture of the eagle, it's going to give us a little hint. How? When we look at this picture right here. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 24. But let me read this verse to you again. It says, The days of our years are 70. And if by reason of strength they be 80 years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Now, it ties in to what Isaiah said about the woman, Israel, when the father gathered them on eagle wings. What are they going to enter into, y'all? Because it said it's going to be what? The, the word said here that the labor and sorrow would be what? Soon cut off and we fly away. Hmm. Now, you got to meditate on that one. Father telling me to go to Isaiah chapter 14 so you can see how that labor and sorrow will be cut away. Okay. And this is just one example. Just not dealing with all scriptures, y'all. I'm just going to the highlight. Okay. Because you're going to have to do some work yourself. You're going to have to get in this book and read. Okay. And see what the Father is showing you with these parts, with these pieces that we make. Isaiah chapter 14. 
I do want to go to the summary. I got this summary, y'all. I got to. For say Isaiah chapter 14, you whose most merciful restoration of Israel. So we know Israel will be restored again as a nation. The two states shall become one that is prophesied. The atrophian insultation over Babylon, I mean over Babel, Babel, I'm sorry. Yahuwah's purpose against Syria, Pas Pal Palestine, I want to say that word right, Palestina is threatened. So when we go to verse 3, it says here, it shall come to pass in the day that Yahuwah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, do you see that word? From thy sorrow, from thy fear, from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Okay? So we know hard bondage ties into what? Labor schools made to serve in these kingdoms. And right now we're in the fourth beast kingdom. And the fourth beast kingdom is my brother's kingdom. He is ruling, who is Enum, known as Esau. Okay? As prophesied by the prophet Ezra, he said that. Esau is the beginning, and Jacob is the kingdom to come, which followed behind Esau. Read 2 Ezra chapter 6, and you will see that. But now, going back to Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, you see that soon Israel, the woman, will, will be getting what? Rest. And let me slow down. Let me go to verse 10. And Okay, that's Isaiah 14. Sorry about that. Let me go back again. Look at Psalms chapter 10. And we look at that verse. It's telling us, Israelites, look at this. That the woman, Israel, labor and sorrow will be cut off. We'll be put to an end. We no more. And they will fly away. Now, which leads us to Matthew chapter 24. Okay. Matthew chapter 24. Also, again, I want to stress to you, you read the book of the Apocalypse of Elijah. This Confirm what is written in Revelation 12 and Matthew 24. What we're about to read now. You know me, I got to go to the chapter summary first and read that unto y'all. Matthew chapter 24. The Messiah foretells the destruction of the temple. What and how great calamity shall fall shall be before it. The signs of his coming to judgment. And because the day and hour is unknown, we ought to watch like good servants, expecting every moment our master's coming. Our Adonai's coming, y'all. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay, now we scroll down. And this is the part. I want you to look at. Here, starting at verse twenty nine. Now, I do highly recommend you read the whole chapter. Okay. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Now, the, the tribulation. We ain't talking about the great tribulation. But in this verse, it said immediately after the tribulation of those days, 
when you read a book of Matthew, the Messiah talks about that. And I'm trying to, I think it's in 23, chapter 23. However, I want you to do a word search in the King James Bible and type in tribulation. For you will learn that the tribulation has been going on since the Messiah has left the earth. The, the tribulation of Israel. Yes. The, the, the tribulation of Israel, which shall lead to the great tribulation that we're expecting to come. Okay. That is something I need to point out to you because a lot of people are not looking at history in its wholeness. They only focus on what is to come and they don't understand that the woman who is Israel and Israel is, is, is has the congregation of Israel. And when we study Torah, we learn that the congregation of Israel are made up of Israelites and Gentiles who had entered into the covenant, okay, of the Most High Yah. So there will be a persecution on those who keep the covenant that the Messiah has made, okay, and those who keep the covenant that Yah has made. There will be a great persecution, okay, since that time. And so it has been ongoing, which shall lead to the great tribulation that most of us know about today or what we've been taught. Okay, but let us keep going. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. So that's going to be a sign. Okay, a sign shall appear. Then shall I, let me read this again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, okay? And they shall see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great shout, a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now this verse you want to highlight. He said, what well, angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and the father want me to give you understanding about these angels about what's on them and when you read apocalypse of elijah he tells you we got to go there so y'all can understand about these eagle wings mm-hmm because the Messiah is telling you, Israel, he's going to send his angels to gather you. Because we are spread throughout the four corners of the earth. His angels. Do you hear that, Israel? Do you hear that? And follow me to remind you, remember there's many, there are going to be different types of gatherings. That's what I'm telling to you. There will be different types of gatherings. You got to go back and read the whole volume of the book and you'll see. Okay. So let us go to, oh, let me finish reading down first. Verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree, which is his, which his branches is tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it's near, even at the door. So what he's confirming unto you, Israelites and Gentiles, that we will know the season of his coming. We will not know the day and the hour, okay? But we will know the season. Because right here he said here, So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Okay? So take this time now to pause your screen because we're going to go to the book of Elijah. Let me see how I'm going to get there. And then I'm going to take y'all to the next mystery that I'm going to mention briefly. Another mystery that's in tour that I have not seen at this time. No one preaching this until you go here. Let's go to Let's see what it let me click on it. Here we go. 
I got to find my notes on it so I know where to go, y'all. I'm going to read one verse. Again, you're going to have to read this whole thing. But it's telling us about these wings. Here we go. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to start above. But I'm gonna have to stop right here because now we get the meaning about these wings, Israelites and Gentiles. Again, it ties into Revelation chapter 12, and Matthew chapter 24. On that day, the Messiah would pity those who are his. He was sent from heaven. His 64,000 angels each of whom has six wings. Now you want to highlight that because we know about these angels having six wings. I know Isaiah talks about this. And I, I know it's in the extension, the in the ascension of Isaiah. Okay. And they have six wings. What would these six wings remind you of? Now we begin to understand why Yahuwah is comparing on how he's going to gather Israel. To the eagle wings. Okay. Now, now, now we're seeing this. Even when I show you the picture. How this eagle is picking up this lamb here. That we see. Okay. Well it's a goat. Sorry. But you see this. Now we're going to see. How Israel. Is built on eagle wings. This is how. The Messiah is going to send his angels. And it says in verse 3, the, the sound will move heaven and earth when they give praise and glory. Okay. So with these angels, I'm sorry. So those that he's gathered, they're going to give what? A praise. And their praise is going to move heaven and earth. That was verse 3. The sound would move heaven and earth when they give praise and glory. Now those upon whose forehead the name of the Messiah is written and upon whose hand is the sealed, both the small and the great, will be taken up upon their wings and lifted up before his wrath. Something to meditate on. I'm going to close that out. So now that we read that, it confirms what Matthew is saying. How the Messiah is going to send his angels to gather you, Israelites and Gentiles, from the four corners of the earth. For those who are chosen to go into the wilderness. Okay. I do want to mention what I'm talking about here is not the whole piece of the gathering. Again, the Father want me to mind you. Let me see where to go. Let's see, can I find it? I have to go back. That you need to watch the rapture doctrine. Because it's going to go into uh, information about these different types of gatherings. But today, the Father wants you to understand about the eagle wings and what it means and how Tor foreshadowed it. Okay. Now we're going to end with this last mystery and it's in Tor. And it's also in the book of Matthew chapter 24. It's a foreshadowing. And you will find it in Leviticus chapter 17 and we'll go there now chapter 17 
And when he showed it to me, I went to the father and I began to meditate on it, y'all. And that night, when I was meditating on that day, he uh, gave me a dream. And in that dream, it gave me the understanding what that means. Let me see here. So can I find it? Here it go. It's Acts of Leviticus chapter 16. I just got to find a verse, y'all. Give me a second. Oh, here it go. Leviticus chapter 16, looking at verse 14, okay? Leviticus chapter 16, looking at verse 14. Again, in his holy days and his solemn feast days, such as Peshat, Passover, Shabbat, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, even Atonement, even Feast of Trumpets, all these holy days. And the days of the Jews, such as um, for the realm, Hanukkah, known as the Feast of Dedication, all these things that my ancestors kept, they have deep spiritual mysteries, meanings. Okay? Before we spread forward, let's go to the chapter summary. And this is what I want you to meditate on. Because you can see it written in Matthew chapter 24. Okay? To get in what it means. Me. Tor was teaching us so much. It's like singing times, but just won't grasp with it. It's verse 14. And I had to go to my father because I asked him. I asked him. And it's dealing with the, um, too often this is. It's dealing with an atonement offering, which is a sin offering for Aaron. Okay, I'm just read high up, read verse 11. I'm just kind of trying to summarize it. Okay, but when I looked at Aaron when he did this offering, I asked this why, Father, and it's in verse 14. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward, and before the mercy seat. Shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times? What I want you to meditate on and what I want you to go before the Father to in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Remember the kingdom is inside of you. You need to ask Yahuwah, why does Aaron, who is the high priest, go before the Holy of Holies? Why do he go? Let me see how much I read this right. Before the mercy seat. Why does he. I'm trying to get my wording right. Excuse me. y'all. Why does he take the blood of the Bala. And sprinkle his finger upon the mercy seat. Eastward. Okay. And then why. Before the mercy seat. He sprinkled the blood with his finger seven times. Father gave me the answer that night in my dream. So, what you're going to have to do, my brothers, it's in your holy days and holy feast days. That playlist link is linked in the video description box. And in this short video, as you see, it's only five minutes and 30, five minutes and 33 seconds. He gives you what does it mean? He gives you the meaning of Leviticus chapter 16, verse 14. I'm telling y'all, he speaks volumes. And the title of that video is Yehovah Word, Hebrew Israelites and Gentiles. The message on October 11, 2016, Redemption and Eternal Rest. Seven, as you see the video cover. Get the meaning of why Aaron did that. Why he did it with the blood, why he did it seven times, and why he was facing eastward. And that's all I want to say on that. So to, to say everything up, let us go back to Revelations chapter 12. 
go to that verse one more time. I want you to meditate on it. Then we begin to understand why the father chose eagle wings. Hmm. For the Israel too, we bear on wings. <laughs> mm. Oh my goodness. The father is so amazing. He amazing, y'all. And that's pulling up. I want to make sure I went through say every tab. Let's see. see, did I do this one? Okay, that's the one I was really trying to pull up. There you go. Do you see how the eagle wings are? Mm, how he covered. And because he covered his feathers, he can fly. But let us go to Revelation chapter 12. Oh, thank you, Father. Remind me of other verses we didn't talk about. Revelation chapter 12. Okay. So as we reflect on verses, I hope you understand, my brothers and sisters, what it means and why Yahuwah chose the wings. Revelation chapter 12, verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly, that she might flee into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. As for the other scriptures that tangs to the eagle wings, you can find that in. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. We can go down there right quick to close this out. I want you to do this. We go to verse 40 to 31. For it says here, But they that wait upon you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You go back, read that whole chapter. Okay. Next verse, go to that that pertains to the eagle wings is Exodus chapter 19, verse 4. The Father want me to remind you, remember, it's a righteous judge. It's a righteous God. Do not think he won't have a way out for you, Israelites and Gentiles. Whether you are poor, whether you are in the prisons, whether you are on your sick bed, whether you are dependent on medications or dependent on a machine to live, your who will have a way for you. For those who have restrictions, on why they cannot flee to a place of safety. He even have a place of safety for you. Okay. So we're going to Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. For it says here. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bear you on eagle wings. And brought you up. And brought you unto myself. Again. Notice how he can bear what he do. To eagle wings. Now we begin to see how the old go hand with the new. How we have a carnal representation with the spiritual representation. In other words, the things of the earth goes hand with the things of the heaven. So in the old covenant, we know how he delivered Israel and how he bare on eagle wings. Because even if I remember correctly, there's a verse that pertained about their garments, how their garments did not wear out during the times of the, of the years they had to wander in the wilderness. Okay. However, when you look in the new covenant, 
Messiah is already telling you Israelites. He would gather you by sending his angels. His angels have those wings. He's telling you from the four corners of the earth. Because remember, we have brothers and sisters who are under restrictions, but they can't leave by their hand. And you know our father loved them. And we would think about the love of Yah. If you love your neighbors yourself, can you leave your neighbor behind who is restricted, who can't get out? No. So the father made a better and excellent way for all to get out. The lame, the blind, the women that are pregnant, the women that are travailing, <laughs> about to give birth. So he has made a way out for all. And his way is better. Something just to meditate and think on, and to and to to confirm what I'm saying to you again. You have to watch the video that talks about the rapture doctrine, and you'll see it. He did a better way for us. Here's your lights and your towels. Okay. All right. So let us go back to the title page. As you see here, we now have an understanding. Of the mystery of the eagle wings. For we truly understand. Why our father in heaven. Used that analogy. Or that parable. Okay. And, and he's a beautiful creature to, to look at. Look at how the most high made him. And look at how. His covering on his body. Resemble. The commandment. That Torah gave us. With our fringes. A beautiful thing. Let me go to that image. So you can have. Okay. To compare. Another okay. word. Look at that image. Look at how. With the northern king garment. Which is the lost. The, um, the ten lost tribe of Israel. The house of Ephraim. The house of Israel. Look at their garments. And then compare it to this eagle. I just love how Yahuwah does things. It's amazing. All right. I have said enough in this video. Again, seek you about this mission of Leviticus chapter 16 on 7. I'm going to click on that. Let me see if it go that. Seek him out for that. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 14. Okay, so I won't go to it, but. I was trying to build this picture. Shalom to my um, brothers and sisters. Right, right that y'all was trying to take it back to the beginning. However, so I can show you that picture. Would it go to it? I guess not. Anyway, take that time to meditate and be glad. Okay. To understand that mystery, for it relates to Matthew chapter 24. So know this, Israelites and Gentiles, who will get his honor and glory. And the world will know, and Israel will know, that he is the one who shall deliver you. No one going to get his honor and glory. He shall be the, know, he shall be the one to, to be known that has delivered the Israelites out of the country of the north and from the four corners of the earth. He would have been known to do that. Now, no one else would take that glory. Okay. Continue to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 8 and baptize them in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. For the Lamb set the example. Of the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism, and the apostles continued them both. For we know there are three witnesses in the earth, and there's three witnesses in the in, in the heavens. And the water is the second witness in the earth to confirm of us entering the new covenant. And I meant to say Romans chapter 10. Understand what is salvation or who is the salvation. As written in Psalms chapter 98 and the book of Luke and the book of Matthew. Understand what it means to, to receive salvation. 
and the righteousness of Yah. Shalom.